Well, California officials right now giving us an update on the state's response to that 6.4 earthquake up in Humboldt County. Let's take a listen. Uh, we know that at this point, at least 10 people were uh, called for emergency services. The two of those injuries we've reported already this morning, a head injury and a hip injury, both right. seem to be minor well, at this point. One. Now uh, let's listen. Thanks for coming in and spending a little time with us. I'm Mark Gellarducci. I'm the director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services here. And I um, want to just take a minute and provide a little bit of an update on the earthquake this morning, the 6.4 magnitude quake that occurred at 234, about eight miles offshore of Ferndale, California, which is up in Humboldt County. Um, uh, obviously a, a relatively strong um, earthquake and, and uh, it was felt widely as far uh, east as Edding and, and as far as uh, south as in the Bay Area. Um, and um, uh, it, I'll, I'll start off by saying interesting to note that the uh, the earthquake early warning system, which is the new system that we have, um, uh, was able to actually push out um, alerts 10 seconds in advance of the earthquake shaking to some 3, 000, 3 million people uh, in, in Northern California. And so I was really happy to, to uh, have given uh, individuals an opportunity to drop cover and hold or get to a place of safety uh, within that 10, 10 sec second time frame. Uh, and the system did operate as we we had hoped and that we've been working to design. Um, uh, the impacts from the quake really uh, uh, centered in Humboldt County and predominantly around the towns of Ferndale and uh, Fortuna and Rio Dell. And uh, it's not an area where there are um, uh, strangers to earthquakes. They've had pretty good sizable earthquakes up in this area in the past and um, you know we're happy that this one wasn't as large as it could have been and we've seen in the past uh, but still we have seen uh, this one resulting in um, you know damage uh, both structural and non-structural when I say structural damage we're talking about damage to homes um, damage to critical infrastructure and lifelines so water power um, and, um, and, and gas lines. Um, at this point, there's some 71,000 people that still are without power, and, uh, and PG&E, we're working closely with PG&E to get that power restored up into the area and, and uh, making sure they've got all the resources to be able to do that. Um, and and non-structural uh, damage, where, what is non-structural damage? It's just things like, um, you know, your plates, your, your, your uh, your bookshelves, your TVs, your things that are on the shelf that could fall over that aren't bolted down. They're non-structural. And unfortunately, it's the non-structural items that create a, um, a danger for people, uh, short of a house collapsing on you or a building collapsing on you, uh, the potential for having a book bookshelf fall over uh, or something uh, come over and, and, uh, and injure you is high. So we have had some injuries as associated, associated with this particular event. Um, we're still assessing the total numbers, um, have no confirmed reports of fatalities as of yet. Um, but um, uh, we do know that we've had some injuries that range from minor to, to moderate, and, and most of those were, uh, again, from non-structural um, kinds of situations. Um, and the infrastructure, and we'll talk about, I, I have a, a few speakers here today, we'll talk about some of the infrastructure, uh, both uh, damage to roads and, and, and bridges, which are obviously critical lifelines uh, in the area and, and, um, and have sustained some damage and are being inspected uh, currently. Uh, we're here at the State Operations Center, where behind me uh, you'll see uh, representatives of a number of state agencies that are here coordinating uh, a state's support response effort to the earthquake up north uh, and to Humboldt County. Uh, really, the, the role here is to provide whatever resources or commodities, mutual aid assets, uh, whatever the, the, the local government uh, and our tribal governments in that area need to be able to address what their immediate needs are. So we have supported them with some mutual aid fire assets and, uh, and uh, we have prepositioned some commodities for, for humanitarian efforts, things like cots and blankets and comfort kits, uh, should they be needed as, as, uh, as the day goes on. We know that there's a storm coming in. We're working closely with the National Weather Service and we're monitoring the, the circumstances there. 
uh, for individuals that uh, may be out of their homes um, as a result of this, and we want to make sure American Red Cross is uh, uh, directly involved and, and um, you know, if there's sheltering systems, there are sheltering items that are necessary or opportunities, uh, that is taking place uh, as well. That damage assessment will be ongoing through today and into tomorrow in the next few days. Earthquake damage is always a little bit more difficult to find because you have to get in and, and understand what the foundations looks like, the, where the cracks may take place, and, and that will also drive uh, what the overall um, um, damage assessment is and, and, and what it means for us from the standpoint of seeking any additional uh, assistance for, um, for disaster aid. Um, important to note that uh, following the uh, 6.4, we, we've had it up to 80 now aftershocks, uh, the largest being a 4.6, which happened in and around Rio Dell. And it, it appears that Rio Dell has probably sustained you know, some of the, the, the hardest hit areas, but there's still assessment going on uh, in, uh, in Ferndale, which is also close to the epicenter. Uh, and we do know that there were some water main breaks and other kinds of things in the town of Fortuna. Um, throughout that process, we, there was a um, um, notice issued by the National uh, Tsunami Information Center uh, based in Alaska, the, the warning center in Palmer, Alaska, advising that there was no threat of a tsunami because the earthquake was offshore. And so um, it's important to note that, and, and so we don't expect that to, to be the case. Um, so um, that's kind of where things are at right now. The State Operations Center on this end uh, will continue to, to be operational through tonight into tomorrow or how, as long as it takes to ensure that uh, all of the resources that are being applied are, are being done so and that uh, we help the, the folks up there navigate through um, through this particular situation. Um, we know that with the aftershocks, um, you know, individuals will um, maybe feel a little uncomfortable about being back in your home. You know, your home is livable. If, you know, you can get in, you, you understand just like anything, if you feel like there is uh, a, the earthquake happening again, an aftershock, drop, cover and hold, find a safe spot in your home to get to. Uh, please remove all that non-structural stuff or bolt it to the wall or secure it in some form or fashion so that it's not above you should something fall over. So you want to make your home as safe as possible through this period of time. And, uh, and of course, if you have any emergencies uh, um, or need any assistance, uh, to call local authorities to be able to provide that assistance to you. Uh, the, 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 the responders up there are pretty busy. Um, uh, so, you know, make sure that we, if you need them, uh, it's something that you need them for when you call them. Uh, but this is a, a, you know, one team, one fight effort. Um, local, state, um, folks all working together to be able to, um, to help out the community there. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Tony Traveris, who is with the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans, and he's gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the work and assessments that we've seen with regards to the, uh, to the bridges and roads. Thank you, Director Gilorgici. I'm Tony Tavares. I'm the director for the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to just mention a little bit about the infrastructure, the state highway system up there in the Humboldt County area. We have dispersed a almost dozen person strike team to go out, inspect all the bridges, the major structures, and the roadways throughout Humboldt County. We have bridge engineers, we have specialized engineers and uh, bridge inspectors that are helping us with this work. So far, we've identified one bridge, the Fern Bridge, which is, which is on State Route 211, connects Ferndale to US 101. Uh, which has suffered some damage um, with that bridge. Um, we have traffic closed at this time on that bridge. We are allowing emergency vehicles to pass across that bridge um, uh, through traffic control. Uh, I also want to mention that I've issued a $6 million emergency director's order to uh, the District 1 director in that area to bring a contractor on board as quickly as possible. We have selected Myers and Sons 
to be that contractor. They are currently mobilizing their equipment and their resources and personnel to uh, actually be on site by later today and begin the, the reconstruction work on that bridge. Most likely, just my, my thoughts going forward, most likely we will shore that bridge and get it ready and open to public traffic and then uh, commence with the, the final repairs of the bridge. Um, also want to mention we are working very closely with regional and local authorities up there on the inspection of their facilities as well. Um, this is a one team effort as uh, Director Giller-Ducci mentioned and all of us here at these state agencies are working very closely with our local partners in the Humboldt County area. Um, one, last, uh, one last item I'd like to mention as well is that Caltrans has various facilities in the area. We are making those, those facilities open to bring in resources. Uh, to assist with uh, any of the needs of Humboldt County. So we're working very closely with these state agencies to bring in commodities and other uh, items that may be needed for the people of Humboldt County. So with that, that concludes my comments. I'd like to turn it over to Cindy Pridmore of the California Geological Survey. Hi, I'm Cynthia Pridmore um, with the California Geological Survey, Department of Conservation. And I'm also chair of the California Earthquake Clearinghouse, which was last activated for the 2019 earthquake. I mean, 2019 earthquake, which was also a 6.4 and a 7.1. Um, today's earthquake was about a half a mile, about two miles offshore. Um, it was about uh, 15 uh, miles southwest of Ferndale. Uh, it was on what's called, it was, the earthquake was probably on what's on, it was called the Gorda Plate. Uh, it's a complex area offshore where we have the Pacific Plate, um, the North American plate, which you know, we're on here, and uh, some small pieces of other plates as well. Uh, the area over the last century has had about 40 earthquakes uh, that are magnitude six to seven. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's not unusual for us to have these earthquakes of this size in this region. Um, we had, as, as Director Gillardurti said, we had um, 80 after, about 80 aftershocks. There were three of them, um, magnitude 4.6, 4.0, and 3.9, which were the largest at this point. Um, we have sent some scientists out in the field from the California Geological Survey, and likely there are other scientists out there as well, as well as um, engineers starting to get a, a reconnaissance feel of uh, what kind of damage and features are out there, and uh, we will be sending more people out there if needed uh, to document the characteristics of this earthquake. Um, part of what the clearinghouse does is help uh, sort out uh, and connect people uh, who are doing that research and make sure that we have a, a, a platform to provide that information out to others. Uh, it's a key part of providing intelligence after an event to the State Operations Center. Uh, as also mentioned, there was no tsunami. The, the plate motion or the, the fault motion for this was a side-by-side -side motion, so there was no uh, possibility of lifting up and even causing a small tsunami. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, oh, the USGS has also put out, this is very helpful, uh, what they call an earthquake forecast, aftershock forecast. Uh, this will be changing by the hour, but when I last looked at it, uh, it there is approximately a 13% chance uh, within the next week of a magnitude five or larger. So, um, you know, people do need to be prepared, especially if they're in weakened structures, to be mindful of, of where they're staying. Uh, and just to be prepared, get that water, make sure they have flashlights and electrical, uh, other, other support things that they need to uh, carry on if there's another earthquake. Earthquake. Thank you. Next speaker is Troy with uh, Highway Patrol. Thanks. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Troy Lucas with the California Highway Patrol. Um, during earthquakes like this, uh, the California Highway Patrol's primary mission is to ensure and maintain public safety and, if needed, to yes. help out with the, any evacuation efforts. Um, also, to necessitate, necessitate the safe movement of community members, goods, and emergency supplies. As soon as this incident occurred, like it's been stated around 2.34 a.m. this morning, CHP officers from the Humboldt area, our Garberville area, as well as Crescent City began conducting damage assessments throughout their respective communities. The majority of the damage of this incident was noted near the Humboldt County. We're, look, we're currently working right now with our law enforcement and public safety partners to include Cal OES, Caltrans, Humboldt County Sheriff Department, Cal Fire to mitigate the, er the emergency as quickly as we can. 
The CHP now, right now, as we currently speak, we only have 12 uniform uh, members fully dedicated to the incident at this point. Um, the CHP's supporting Caltrans right now uh, at a closure at Fern Bridge, the, which is State Route 211, which is still currently closed, as already previously mentioned. And the CHP will continue to provide dedicated personnel until this incident is mitigated. Um, at this point, I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, just to closing, um, <clears throat> so we've continued to keep Governor Newsom briefed on uh, on the uh, response and and uh, all of the different as aspects and strategies that were were taking place. And and I, I think it's really important to reiterate something um, about the commissioner said and, and and Cindy said, and that is is really this issue of having a plan. You know, we live in earthquake country. This is another example of of uh, the fact that earthquakes can occur at any time uh, without notice. And so it's really important that uh, we as Californians have a plan, have a family plan. We have some supplies We, in case we lose power like they have done there or in case we have to, um, you know, we, we, you know we, we can't have our refrigerators don't work or whatever the case, we've got some supplies that we can take care of ourselves or our family uh, for a few days and of course, you know, we, we, we've seen now on, on numerous occasions that the uh, earthquake early warning system is a very valuable tool. So we really encourage you to download, if, if you haven't, the MyShake app uh, and, and get that. It, it comes as part of the Android phones, but if you don't have an Android phone, download that app. It's free and uh, it's something that you can have and, um, and be able to, you know, have another tool in the toolbox to make your, your family as safe as possible. Um, so with that, um, uh, we've heard from the team here. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Hi, I'm Sophie with the Associated Press. Can you tell me if we have a sense of how many people could be temporarily displaced because of this, displaced from their homes, and how many people could be without water um, or gas? So right now as part of the, the damage assessment that's underway is to get a better sense of exactly the number of homes that have been damaged enough that people cannot go back in and, and reside uh, in those homes. And, uh, you know, we know that there have been, a, 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 there is w at least one structure fire and we also know that, uh, that there were a couple of homes that may have been knocked off their foundation uh, or partially collapsed. So uh, we're going through this damage assessment to, to get a, a sense of that as we speak now. And then um, uh, with regards to water, part of that damage assessment is to make an assessment of how much of the water delivery system in the, in the towns I mentioned, Rio Del, Fortuna, and Ferndale, have been impacted in a way. Can those, those water systems be patched? Uh, and uh, in, the, in the interim, I mentioned earlier, that we are pre-positioning commodities such as water and other kinds of things to be able to support the community if necessary. So if we need to get water to people um, based upon the outcomes of this assessment, uh, we can make sure that, that people have the water they need um, for you know as long as they need it. Um, some of these things that, that uh, where you get large breaks in the system do take a while to replace, and uh, that is a priority of some of the things that we work with local government on is ensuring that all the resources are there for local government to be able to get those those lifelines patched as soon as possible. We know that the sooner that the water power and, and electric, you know, water power and, and gas service comes back online, um, you know, the rest of it can, can be pretty smooth. So um, that's that's really gonna be the one of the larger efforts in the next 24 to 48 hours. And you're listening right now to uh, state emergency response teams. They are giving us an update on that 6.4 earthquake in Humboldt County this morning. The good news here, no reported deaths at this time. Right. There were some reported injuries, minor to moderate. Those people are expected to be okay, but still a lot of people affected. 70,000 people still without power. And of course, those teams are out there right now. They also talked about those teams going out to assess the damage. Right. So